Matthias Church to worship with congregations of St. Matthias Episcopal Church and First Presbyterian Church, Waukesha. We hope you will find this a welcoming place in which to worship God and celebrate community. If you want to find out more about us, there's information in a binder in the back of the pews, or you can go to our website. All baptized Christians are welcome to the Lord's table, and instructions on how to receive communion are found in the bulletin. To contribute towards our ministry here at St. Matthias, place your offering in the plate at the back of the church or give online at our website. And to those with us online, welcome. You will find a copy of the bulletin in the description of the video, or you can use the QR code shown during the service to find the bulletin or donate. Let us now worship God. Beloved, we are God's children now. When Christ is revealed, we will be like him. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. This is the good news we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. That Christ died for our sins and was buried and rose again on the third day. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. He appeared to Peter and to the twelve and to many faithful witnesses. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. At last he came to us so that we might come to believe and proclaim this good news to the world. Hallelujah. The Lord is risen indeed. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Hallelujah. Let us worship God. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
that we may abide in your love and serve only in your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. <laughs> blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may behold him in all his redeeming works, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though our own power or piety, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God had raised from the dead. To this we are witness. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and you know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened, and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. of all of our hearts be always acceptable, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So it's only the third Sunday of Easter, so keep on feasting. In the Easter season, we get all the stories of the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus, and today we get the most Wisconsin of all of them, as even Jesus Christ knows you have to make an appearance at the fish fry. <laughs> This passage is one that really benefits from being connected to the context before and after. The verses after this passage are the end of the Gospel of Luke, the ascension when Jesus is taken into heaven and the work of mission begins. And we get a part of that story in the book of Acts today, which is also written by Luke as the follow-up to his Gospel. The story before the passage today is the road to Emmaus. And in that story, two of the larger group of disciples, not the twelve, are leaving Jerusalem. And on the road they encounter Jesus, whom they don't recognize, who walks with them and explains how the scriptures are fulfilled in Jesus' death and resurrection. And when they get to Emmaus, Jesus sits down to dinner with them, breaks the bread, and they instantly recognize him before he disappears. They run back to Jerusalem to tell the apostles, and they tell the twelve how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread, a phrase that echoes down through history and liturgy to us. The Emmaus story is a clear link to the sacrament of Holy Communion, where Christ's body is given for us. And it sets up the passage for today. The first part of verse 36, which is omitted from the reading today, is, while they were talking about this, so the apostles are still discussing the Emmaus appearance and what it means, when, as we heard, Jesus stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Now, this is a common address for angels and other heavenly beings in the Bible because it's pretty terrifying to have a numinous being just suddenly appear. But it's also pretty terrifying to have a dead person show up. And they are terrified. The Greek here uses the same verb that's used elsewhere to describe the terror of war. To be colloquial, they completely lose their, well, you know, because it was no less terrifying or life-changing for them to have somebody show up from the dead than it would be for us. We're sometimes tempted to think that ancient people are less sophisticated than us, that someone coming back from the dead would seem less miraculous because of their pre-scientific mindset, but that's being unfair and illogical. The, the reason why we have these stories is because it was such an unthinkable event and made such an impression on those who were there. Then, just as now, people did not routinely return from the dead. In fact, if you look at the plethora of ghost documentaries and zombie dramas we have now, you might think we'd actually be the ones more likely to believe. 
the disciples don't know what kind of category to put Jesus into. Like us, they had ghost stories, and ghosts were usually thought to return to bring bad things. So Jesus reassures them. He says, peace be with you, which obviously doesn't work. He invites them to look at him and touch him. The, the text doesn't say that they take him up on the offer to touch him, so I kind of imagine they're still standing there in shock. So this is where the fish fry comes in. He asks very politely in the Greek for some food. They give him some fish and he eats. He's eating, so he's obviously not a ghost. I mean, think of those cartoons or movies where a ghost tries to eat and the food just falls through them. No, this is a final proof for them that Jesus that stands before them is an embodied corporeal being. Now, obviously, it's a different body. It appears and disappears, but it can be touched. It bears the marks of crucifixion. It can eat a Northwoods walleye dinner at Culver's. <laughs> Biblical commentators point out that this eating of the fish would have been the most important point in this passage for the original hearers of the gospel. Because for you and for me, we approach the idea of a bodily resurrection post-Easter, post-Ascension, post 2,000 years of Christian history and interpretation. We can choose to believe or disbelieve in it, but the concept of a bodily resurrection is something that exists in our memory, in our mental space. For the original hearers of the gospel, this was a completely new concept. If the dead could come back, it was always in the form of a ghost, but a ghost can't have Icelandic cod at Serb Hall. No, this is something completely new, something that has to be explained as Christianity expands. There's some comparison in the book of Ezekiel, in the vision of the valley of dry bones where flesh and sinews come back upon the people of Israel at the end time. And this is a foretaste of that. Jesus, the Son of God, was resurrected as the first fruit of that final resurrection of humanity. What we can hear in our modern context is this. The human body is important. Jesus' fleshy existence is taken and made into something new, but something that bears the marks of the life lived before. There is the joy of the resurrection that the apostles slowly seem to have dawned on them after the initial shock, but there's also the marks of the suffering that remain with him as a part of his resurrection body. What came before matters. What happened in his life matters. His embodied experience matters and is preserved. As we head towards the Feast of the Ascension, which is not about direction or cosmology, but about Jesus being taken back to the Godhead in his resurrection body, it's important to remember this, the resurrection of Jesus' body means that embodied humanity is now part of the Godhead in all of its glory, but also with the memory of the human life has lived. The bodily resurrection means that God is with us in our human suffering in an intimate and personal way. And it also means that our physicality matters. There are certain strains of human philosophy and religion that are extremely dualist. The flesh is bad, the spirit is good. We need to escape the flesh so that we can experience the real us, which is spirit, kind of like Sting's song, We Are Spirits in a Material World. Sometimes you find this tendency even within Christianity. Even the Apostle Paul occasionally seems to lean in this way, likely due to his classical Greek training in philosophy. But if there is one thing we can learn from the bodily resurrection, it's that who we are as enfleshed beings is part of God's plan for eternity. Genesis says we were created very good, and our bodies remain that way in God's sight, part of our human destiny from the very beginning. Therefore, don't despise what God has created very good. In her song, Born This Way, Lady Gaga, yes, that's right, you're going to get Culver's and Lady Gaga in the same sermon. <laughs> Welcome to Easter, deal with it. In Born This Way, Lady Gaga tells a short story. My mama told me when I was young, we were all born superstars. She rolled my hair and put my lipstick on in the glass of her boudoir. There's nothing wrong with loving who you are, she said, because he made you perfect, babe. So hold your head up, girl, and you'll go far. God has made us in wondrous diversity and called us very good. 
But in our insecurities, in our need for control, we tell others that their bodies do not measure up. To enforce human ideals, we criticize others' bodies, size, color, gender, sexual orientation. At one point, it's handedness. Every culture and generation seems to need to have something about human bodies to criticize and sort who is in and who is out. And we now know from psychotherapy that these criticisms can become internalized and turn into despair and depression and abuse and sometimes self-harm. And to be completely transparent, the church has been at least complicit in this practice and at worst an instigator. It's something we need to be repentant of. And sometimes our bodies fail us with sickness and disease and suffering, and some of that is impossible for us to understand. But if we go back to Jesus' resurrection, we can see the truth of Lady Gaga's mother's statement. Jesus' resurrection body is not like the one he had before, but yet it is. It bears the marks of the nails. His former life is still part of who he is, but it no longer completely defines him. God holds us in front of the mirror and tells us, there's nothing wrong with loving who you are. I made you perfect. Hold your head up and you'll go far. In the long run, all of what we consider to be imperfect is perfect in God's eyes, and all will be transformed in the bodily resurrection. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Don't let anyone tell you you're ugly or trash or a hopeless sinner or a deviant, because your body is destined for something greater than that person can ever imagine. It's part of God's plan from the very beginning. It is destined to be like Jesus' post-resurrection body and to live in the eternal presence of God. God makes no mistakes. You were born higher than the angels. You were born to share in Christ's body. You were born to be with God. You were born this way. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God has made the one who was rejected the cornerstone of a new community. In the name of Christ Jesus, let us pray for the needs of the world, saying, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. <clears throat> Holy One, as the risen Christ opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures and give them power through the Holy Spirit to walk boldly in this world, open your people today to the healing, wisdom, and faith given in your word. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Prince of Peace, as Christ Jesus showed his wounded hands and feet to the terrified apostles, reveal to your church and to people of prayer in every faith the wounds of our neighbors, the fears of individuals and families, and the avenues toward healing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Author of life, we ask for peace among nations, peace throughout our communities, peace within families, Guide leaders and voters, legislatures and parliaments, judges and juries. Teach diplomacy and let our ways be formed so that all of your creation may have plenty. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Light in our darkness, let your brightness burn in places shrouded in violence. 
Reveal the pains that are hidden in secret. Unveil the needs of our own hearts so that we may know the power of vulnerability. Your son was raised to life even from the grave. Show us again that life comes from death. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healer of every ill, we pray for all who are in need, for refugees of war and all who are displaced by storms, for rescue workers and medical teams, for those whose bones are weary, for those who show us the power of community to give hope to the frightened, and for all who have asked for our prayers. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command us to bring to you our deepest desires, O God, and we pray now for those persons and concerns that lie on our hearts. We pray for an end to conflict in our world, especially between Israel and Iran and Russia and Ukraine. We pray for all those who suffer due to human violence, especially the people of Palestine, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, and South Sudan. We pray for all who have felt the impact of violence in our nation. We pray for Jews and Muslims in our country whose safety is threatened by hate. We pray for Megan, Carol, Rachel, Ellen, Becky, and Jessica. In our prayer list for Waukesha congregations, we pray for Salem United Methodist Church. And I bid your intercession silently or aloud at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Trusting in your abundant mercy, O God, we commend into your care all for whom we pray in our own lives, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Welcome to everybody here uh, on this beautiful Sunday morning, um, and also to those who are with us online. Good to have you with us. Uh, as always, we're taking in um, food for the food pantry to the left of the pulpit. Um, just want to make sure everybody who hasn't seen the email uh, knows that um, our our 17-year uh, uh, church musician who's been here a, a year longer than I have uh, has turned in his. Uh, his notice uh, for, for personal reasons, and uh, we wish him well. Uh, we will be um, going through a process of trying to find a replacement. He's graciously given us until August 31st um, to, uh, to get this process finished. Um, so um, there's really not enough I can say about Craig and, and the ministry he's done among us. So now is a time to exp express uh, personally your uh, appreciation for what he's doing. We'll do something bigger uh, when we know when his final Sunday will be. It'll be a celebration. So, <laughs> you look like you have something to say, Andrew. Just a small one. We have not forgotten about the church pictorial directory. Yeah. <laughs> and I know it's been in process for a while. I will still be taking pictures in each of the Sundays today, next Sunday, and the following Sunday. And hopefully we'll get all of the pictures we can so that we can put that directory together. Thank you. After church in the Undercroft. Undercroft underneath, yes. Um, just as we're in a time of, um, of extreme um, instability uh, going on in the world right now, I'm going to remind you that while it is a Christian's duty to be informed about what's going on in the world, there's really nothing good you can get out of doom scrolling on, on Facebook or spending all of your time watching a news channel. Um, you need to know what's going on, but there, it's not good for a human's um, identity to just completely be um, wrapped up in that all the time. So. The, the most important thing you can do right now, there are times where we, can, we, we're, where we can contact our political representatives, there are times where we can take action, uh, but at this point, the best thing we can do is just pray uh, for, the, um, for the Middle East and hopes that, um, that, that peace is, is maintained there or restored, some might say. Are there any birthdays, anniversaries, or traveling blessings today? Yeah, do you know this? Did they check out? 
Okay, so who's doing what here? Okay, anniversary, travel, <coughs> travel. Okay, that's easy. All right. Okay. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, face each other, grab each other's right hands, and how many, wow. <laughs> and how many years of uh, wedded bliss is this for the two of you? Oh, 51, but not a wedded bliss, is that what you're saying? Bill, 51 years. Oh God, you so have consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may continue to love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace this day and forevermore. Amen. Happy anniversary. <laughs> yeah, 51 years. And Godspeed, everybody. Jesus said, Scripture foretells the sufferings of the Messiah and his rising from the dead on the third day, and declares that in his name repentance bringing the forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem.
God, we offer to you only a portion of what you have given us. All that we have is from your creative hand. All that we can give away, we do through Jesus' love. All our renewal comes from the Holy Spirit's wisdom. Deal graciously with these gifts so that others may have joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Holy One, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Holy God, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Jesus lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, Jesus gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for Christ who died and rose for us, you sent the Holy Spirit, your own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for Jesus to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Almighty God, we now celebrate this redemption memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming Christ's resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting Christ's coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. God, our Creator, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, 
reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with matriarchs, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Saint Matthias and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us seek the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell this good news to the world. The Lord has risen indeed. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.